Happy monitors come in a vast amount of different colorations and patterns, each acting like its own unique fingerprint for that individual Aki. But there are actually a few select breeders who have explicitly bred Akis to exhibit particular patterns and colorations, and those are called lines. So let's talk about these different lines or lineages of Aki monitors today. Teaser guys, that all black Aki that is mysteriously on some island off the northern coast of Australia, yeah, might be a lot closer than you think. Let's get to it, guys. Hey guys, how's it going? You know, it's the beginning of a new year. I'll be completely bald. Yellow Aki. Reptile. Hey guys, how's it going? Finally, this video a lot of you guys have been waiting for, we're gonna be talking about different Aki monitor lines. Specifically, we're gonna be talking about nine of them, most of which I believe you probably have never heard of. So we're gonna go in order of the most popular lines to least popular. Hint, the rare ones, specifically that black Aki, is gonna to be towards the end of the video. So make sure you watch all the way through. Let's go. To start this all off, let's just quickly recap how these lines came about. Basically, line breeding, using Ackies as an example, is when you take one male and one female that exhibit a specific trait you like. Let's say there's an extra red Aki that you really enjoy, and you found a female that has that same redness. Well, you pair them together, you let them have offspring, and then you take the two reddest, one male, one female offspring, and breed them together. And you continue that process until you have these super red Aki monitors, and then that's a line, it's a lineage. And that's where all nine of these lines we're gonna talk about today came from. They all started with a vision that some breeder had and wanted more Akis to have, so they bred that specific aspect out. So let's start with what I think is the most popular line. First, let it be known that if you have a specific line of Aki, you are probably pretty lucky and in the minority of Aki owners. Most people don't have a line bred Aki. They have something that was just bred because they had a male and a female and they put it together. The main takeaway I got from doing this video is that a lot of lines are dying out and are now mixed. There are people who are doing their best job at keeping some lines going, like John Eggdragna from Sims, or Jonathan Mendoza, and hopefully myself as I continue my journey, but mostly they are non-existent. With all of that said, let's talk about what I believe the most popular line of Ackies is currently in terms of availability. It's my newest pair edition, Hendrick Reds. Now the Hendrick line stemmed from Europe and was imported into the United States. They exhibit a nice red background with some white outer circles with black in the middle and they typically feature a very yellow head, arms, and tail. From what I can gather, this is the line that looks to be the starter line that a lot of Aki breeders who are serious about Aki breeding get into and it's really that standard line that they continue on and people like to get. They actually are very stunning and really enjoy the yellows on the arms, legs, tail, and neck like I mentioned. So if you're looking to take Aki breeding a little bit more seriously, Hendrick Reds are probably the one you want to get into first if you're looking at line breeding because they're the most available. And in terms of availability, they are still pretty decently hard to get. Like I said, all of these are somewhat difficult to get. It took me several months to find my pair and I have some connections that I've made through this channel and some people who I can talk to and point me in other directions and honestly, I got a little lucky. I mean, anyone who has bred Ackies knows how hard it is just to get an adult female Aki. So to get an adult female Aki who's a specific line and even get a male from that line, that's pretty difficult even in the most popular line, which is like I said, Hendrick Reds. For continuing on, I would really appreciate if you guys looked in that lower right hand corner and hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell as well for all the latest updates on the channel. If you enjoy this video so far, you'll definitely enjoy my other Aki monitor content. So definitely hit that subscribe button to stay tuned. Let's go on guys. If you're looking to get some Hendrick Reds, I should have some probably in the early fall, my first clutch of them since I've gotten the pair. I have had infertile eggs from the girl, but I should have actually fertile ones come fall. But I also know that John of Dragna probably has them. Jeff Easter, I believe still has them. So you could check out those breeders if you're interested in getting a baby. Next in line of popularity is one that exists not only as a line, but also as a locale. The only one in this list that actually does so. And that is a top and 
top-ender yellow ackee. I was lucky to get my hands on a top-ender yellow male ackee a couple years back, and I've been casually looking for a female ever since. Now, like I said, Top Enders actually started as a locale, but then were taken by Frank Rita's in the early 2000s and proven out to be sort of a line. The typical Top Ender will have big white spinal spots, they will have long neck stripes, and they're usually very docile, which makes them great pets. One of the main issues with Top Enders, though, is that there's a lot of fake Top Enders out there. There's a lot of people who just see whiteness down the back of their Aki monitor and call it a Top Ender. Luckily, I got the go-ahead from both Johns, specifically John Mendoza, who said I have quite a special top ender with me. So I'm pretty happy with mine, but that's something you really got to keep an eye for. I'm going to break out my Jerry Seinfeld and say, what's the deal with all these Johns breeding and keeping Aki monitors? I mean, really. Moving on to what I believe is the third most popular line of Aki monitors. If you are a fan of a specific sponge living under the sea, you're really going to enjoy this one. It's Pineapple Reds. Now, I'm going to be honest, I don't know too much about Pineapple Reds. This is my first time hearing of them when doing research for this video. But they were actually developed by Alex Sim Hatch, who is again part of Sim, Sim Containers, and typically exhibit bright orange colors with black reticulations looking like a pineapple. Despite not being aware of them until like a month ago, they are actually one of the more stunning lines and stunning visuals out of any Aki monitor, let alone red Aki monitors. I would really love to get my hands on a pair of them or even one just because they're so stunning and beautiful. And I think this probably could be a strong contender for the number one Aki line in terms of looks. We already talked about the infamous Frank Rita's with Top Enders a moment ago, but he actually has his own line as well. The only line that exists as both yellows and reds. Now starting with what I believe is the fourth most popular line, the Rita's line, we're really getting to the most rare lines of Aki monitors. In fact, you probably are in the single digits percent wise of Aki monitor keepers if you have a pure Retest Aki monitor. If you have a pair, you best be breeding them, or you can send them my way, you can send them my way too. I have to say that the Rita's line probably has some of the most diverse Aki monitors for a line, but typically they have big yellowish spots with a red background. Other than the black Aki's, which we'll get to, this is the line that I would probably want to get the most personally. I just really love the specific yellows in this line, and again, those big spots. It's just a very cool looking Aki that I can't exactly describe in words that I think in my head. I think they just really remind me a lot of Asus and Dell and the strong yellows that they have. I am a huge fan of yellows and Aki's, and I really never understood how the red coloration is just so much more popular than the yellow coloration. If you get a really yellow Aki, it is just an absolute stunner. So I guess that's why I really like Rit Rita's, oh my God. There I go, messing up his name again, but I think that's really why I love the Rita's line. It just reminds me a lot of that. Next up is a line that is frequently mixed with the Rita's line, and that is the Mueller line. This line came from Europe just like Hendrix and actually really only exists in North America as a hybrid with the Retest line. Man, was it difficult to find an image of a pure Mueller line Aki. I only got one, and that was from John Egg Dragna, and he's breeding them with Rita's line Aki's. As for Europe, it's still difficult to find a Mueller line Aki over there. I talked to David Archer a little bit, who breeds them in the UK, and he has difficulty finding any pure Mueller lines over there as well. Anyway, what they typically look like is like Hendrix, but they look a little darker at least in my opinion. Now, I don't think these are the most, you gotta go out and get them Aki monitors out there. Obviously, all Aki monitors are absolutely beautiful, but this one, I'm not missing too much, but it's a shame that they're not as prominent as some of the other lines out there. Before moving on to the final four lines of Aki monitors, I just wanna say these lines are either extinct lines or unnamed lines. So let's get to it and let's talk about some of the rarest, and I mean rarest. We're already talking about rare, but this is some of the rarest lines vacuum monitors you will ever find. Let's start off with two essentially extinct lines of Aki monitors, that is Pet Rock and Pro Exotics. Both of these lines were popular back in the 2000s. The businesses eventually died, and with that, the lines died kind of at the same time. I know it's 2021, but the 2000s were not too long ago, and there are definitely some Pet Rock and Pro Exotic Aki's still out there. 
Pet Rock, they existed as reds, while Pro Exotics, they existed as yellows. So if you have one of them, you might want to try to find the opposite sex of what you have, pair them up, try to get that line going again. Or again, just like Doritos, send them to me. Just send them to me, guys. Truly though, if you do have Pet Rock or Pro Exotic line Ackies, do send me a picture, because I just want to see more of them. It was so hard just to get some pictures, at least one of each. I had to really deep dive into Fauna Classifieds, and it, trust me, it was a lot of work, but really cool and a shame that they're dying out. So if you have any, I don't know, maybe consider doing a service to the community and bringing them back. And finally, to round out this extensive list, we have two unnamed lines, and yes, it is time for Black Ackies. We have the unnamed line of Black Ackies, and we have EUR3, which is the line that Aces and Dell came from. This is not a special line in any regards. Actually, there are probably a lot of different lines out there that exist but are just unnamed, and I kind of wanted to give Aces and Dell as an example. But let's start out with that pretty famous, what you guys came here for probably, line of Black Ackies. I don't want to hype this up too much because it doesn't seem like they're actively being pursued right now. The person who really started the project isn't doing them too much or isn't really breeding at all anymore. But as legend apparently goes, Benjamin Hutchinson took some darker rare earth red Ackies and started line breeding them specifically for those darker colors. And let me tell you guys, woo, these guys are fire. I really enjoy the darker colors. I can just imagine how they would look, what they would look like, and how cool they would be if this project was pursued. Now, as far as I know, there's three current keepers of this Black Aki line, or offspring from this project that has stopped. That is John of Dragna, he has one. Benjamin Hutchinson, I just gave you guys a finger. <laughs> John of Dragna, having one. Benjamin Hutchinson, having one. And some unnamed, unknown party at this time, having the rest of the clutch. And I want to know who you are. So basically, we could do this the easy way or the hard way. You can come in here, you can leave a comment, leave me some information about where I could contact you. We'll do things the easy way, because I will find you, and I will get a price tag on those Ackies and continue that project. Let it be known. But seriously, guys, this was just the beginning of that project, and just look at the black colors and imagine them being more prominent over time, and it already looks amazing in how dark they are. I know the Aki isn't just a full black Aki, and there's still plenty of different reds, yellows, oranges in there, but just imagine where this would go and how it already looks with just a couple generations under the belt. As for Asus and Dell, like I said, they are actually from a line that's titled EUR3. This is basically just saying they came from the EU, and they are Generation 3. And this is kind of how they are named, their lines are called, when they don't really have some type of brand to them, I would say. Essentially, their line might not just be as popular, or might not have a specific coherent theme just yet, so they don't really have a flashy name or something like that. And the whole point behind this that I'm trying to illustrate with this last line is that there are a lot of unnamed, unknown lines out there. And there are plenty of lines that could come in the future from these lines. So I just want to end on that. Just because you don't have a flashy titled name line of Aki, you still might have a line Aki, if that makes sense. It just might be from some unknown, unnamed line. Anyway, guys, huge shout out to John Dragna, John Mendoza, Benjamin Hutchinson, and David Archer for helping a ton with this video. I relied on them a lot for this information, so definitely props to them. It wouldn't have happened without them, and I appreciate you guys tuning in. I hope this lived up to the hype of what this video is supposed to be about and what you guys wanted from this video. And if it did, make sure to leave a like and leave a comment. What is your favorite line that was presented today? Are you gonna actively pursue that line also? Let me know in a comment. Otherwise guys, you could get $5 off your first purchase of Reptilinks by using code ProfessorHerp at checkout. Reptilinks is a great nutritious diet for tegus, hognose snakes, blue tongue skinks, and more. Use it exclusively for my tegu, Frappuccino. Definitely recommend $5 off your first purchase with code ProfessorHerp at checkout. Alrighty guys, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I would really appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye everyone.